Welcome to our scripture reflection for Holy Thursday. Uh, We've begun the sacred triduum. Lent has ended and we gather this evening to celebrate the solemn commemoration of the Lord's Supper. It's a powerful celebration of Mass which in many ways speaks about what we do every time we celebrate the Eucharist together. Unfortunately, we're not able to do that live at the moment, but I hope that uh, as you tune in this evening to a celebration of the Mass of the Lord's Supper, I'll certainly watch the Holy Father in St. Peter's. I hope that when you do tune in, it will speak to you about who we are and what we do and indeed why we do it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As usual, we pray for the gifts of God's Holy Spirit, that we might understand what we read and what we hear, and be further empowered to put into practice what we understand the task of discipleship to be, as the Holy Scriptures prompt and direct us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So, the Mass of the Lord's Supper this evening presents us with a, a number of unique opportunities. It begins, of course, with the invitation of the Word of God. We have the Last Supper account from St John's Gospel. We've got Paul speaking to the Corinthians about what was handed on to him about the Holy Eucharist. And we're going to take a moment to have a look at the book of Exodus, the first reading for the liturgy of this evening. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month is to be the first of all the others for you, the first month of your year. Speak to the whole community of Israel and say, On the tenth day of this month, each man must take an animal from the flock, one for each family, one animal for each household. If the household is too small to eat the animal, a man must join with his neighbour, the nearest to his house, as the number of persons requires. You must take into account what you each can eat in deciding the number for the animal. It must be an animal without blemish, a male, one year old. You may take it from either sheep or goats. You must keep it till the 14th day of the month when the whole assembly of the community of Israel shall slaughter it between the two evenings. Some of the blood must be taken and put on the two doorposts and the lintel of the house where it is eaten. That night the flesh is to be eaten, roasted over the fire. It must be eaten with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. You shall eat it like this, with a girdle round your waist, sandals on your feet, a staff in your hand. You shall eat it hastily. It is a Passover in honour of the Lord. That night I will go through the land of Egypt and strike down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, man and beast alike, and I shall deal out punishment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood shall serve to mark the houses that you live in. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and you shall escape the destroying plague when I strike the land of Egypt. This day is to be a day of remembrance for you, and you must celebrate it as a festival in the Lord's honour. For all generations you are to declare it a day of festival forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, the book of Exodus gives to the Israelites the instruction as to how they are to celebrate the Passover. Something of its significance and an enduring value. It's the holiest moment for Jewish families to celebrate the Passover. Of course, since the destruction of the temple um, in Jerusalem in AD 68, they don't uh, celebrate Passover, they celebrate a Seder meal. It has the elements of Passover, but because they are without the temple, there is no sense of having been rescued by God completely 
inheriting their own land, their own nation, their own temple. There is a, a land, there is a nation, but as yet there is no temple. So Judaism remains incomplete. And so Passover isn't celebrated. But they say there is, and it has many of the elements that are the same. But it's here for us at the celebration of the Mass of the Lord's Supper to remind us of the context in which the Lord's Supper took place. It was a Passover meal. It was Jesus getting together with his extended family, if you like, the disciples, and celebrating the events of the liberation of the people of God. So that's the context. The celebration tonight is about liberation. It's about a celebration of the covenant. It's about the power of God. And there are elements for us, of course, as Catholic Christians, which are built on that. They're not the same as that, but that's their origin and that's their purpose. And we celebrate it tonight because we are celebrating our covenant, our liberation and the power of God to liberate us. And of course, that's a celebration and a liberation that is going to take a little time, three days. It's kind of interesting if you look at it as if the Easter Trudum is like a slow motion celebration of Mass. We celebrate the Lord's Supper, we celebrate the passion and death of the Lord on the cross, and we celebrate the resurrection. And we celebrate all of those three things every time we celebrate the Eucharist together. It's not an imitation of the Last Supper Mass, but it is a celebration of the Paschal Mystery, of our participating in the Covenant, in our particular relationship with God, and our particular liberation. The liberation we're celebrating in these days of Holy Week, had we been able to get together, would be liberation from sin. We would all seek to be reconciled. In these days, we would seek the Sacrament of Reconciliation, Confession. And we also recognise in the resurrection from the dead, we are liberated from death. What's significant about the Passover? Well, it's celebrated in the present tense. That is to say, and there are a number of prescribed questions for the youngest person at the table. Why is this night different from other nights? What is it that we're doing? But it's in the present tense. It's not why was this night different or what were we doing? Because to celebrate something as a memorial, and remember the words of the Lord, do this in memory of me, is to make present the original events in the lives of those who participate. The liturgy is not some kind of play, some kind of mime in the context of religious emotion that gladdens us. No, what we do when we celebrate the Eucharist is we make present the body and blood of the Lord. Just as he gave his body and blood to the disciples that night, it is a making present. It's not simply a memory, it's a memorial. And those events are complete in themselves. They don't need to be repeated, but we do have the opportunity as members of the church, as St Paul will go on to say when we read the second reading tonight, that this is what was handed on to us. And it's what makes us who we are, because in the way that the exodus and the giving of the law and the inheritance of the promised land made of a people who were not a people before a great nation. So the Eucharist builds us as members of the church. It's to be eaten in haste with a staff in your hand and a girdle round your waist with unleavened bread, bread that's not had a chance to sit and to rise. It's taken in haste because it's food for the journey. It's about escape, liberation, and so it's a nourishment which is required to sustain us on that journey of embracing the liberation that the cross, death and resurrection of Christ has offered us. Our salvation is already achieved, but our part is to embrace it and to live it and indeed to make it present. So while we are reading historical instruction in the book of Exodus. It's an instruction present, an instruction for our lives, and an instruction which is new for every age and 
indeed for every year that we celebrate it. It will be particular this year in that we won't do it together as a parish community and that will be very painful for us all. But we will do it together as members of the church in a variety of contexts and through a variety of media. I hope and pray that you, like me, will get a sense of being part of a community of the people of God. That, that God is powerful for us. That what we do when we celebrate the Eucharist, even at a distance, is that we celebrate God's covenant with us, God's relationship with us, God's power working in us, through us and for us and indeed the liberation that we all enjoy from the fear of sin and death by virtue of the sacrifice of Christ. So at Mass we'll do what the Lord did, not in the form of play acting, but in the form of taking, blessing, breaking and giving. That's why the procession of gifts, the consecration, the Lamb of God, and the distribution of communion are the key hinge elements of our celebration of the Eucharist and it's good for us to celebrate all of them with particular emphasis. So you will witness rather than participate in the taking, the blessing, the breaking and the giving of the bread and the wine that we believe becomes the body and blood of the Lord. I hope in doing so you have that sense of covenant, you are special to God, of the power of God at work in our midst and of the liberation that comes from being a member of the people of God. And that further, the Eucharist, whenever we get the chance to receive it again, will prove itself to be a nourishment for us, sustenance and food for our journey. Let's end with our prayer to St. Rock, patron saint of those afflicted by plague. O blessed St. Rock, patron of plague victims, have pity on those who lie upon a bed of suffering. Your power was so great when you were in this world that by the sign of the cross many were healed of their diseases. Now that you are in heaven, your power is not less. Offer then to God our hopes and prayers, and obtain for us all that health we seek. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Rock, pray for us that we may be preserved from all diseases of body and of soul. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I hope that you, together with your families, get some time to chat if you're not able to meet in person. I hope that you take a moment to reflect upon the Eucharist that builds us as members of the family of God. And I hope you, your families, friends and neighbours are safe and well and that your care for one another is a tribute to the values that we share and to the gift of Christ which we seek to reflect in our own self-giving. Stay safe and stay well. Goodbye.